Hello and welcome to Tech Deals Cooler Masters Master Case H500P Mid Tower RGB Case with 200 millimeter fans. Today I'm going to take you on a tour of the case, take all the panels off, show you all the wonderful features, the vertical GPU mounting option, 360 millimeter liquid cooling mounts, and talk to you about an upgrade available a mesh version. Not only can you buy this in a mesh version, but you can upgrade the existing one. Cooler Masters made the new front panel available. Links to all of that down in the description below. Now, before we get started, there's a giveaway running in the month of March 2018. I have partnered with three other channels, Level 1 Techs, Hardware Unboxed, and Tech Yes City. There'll be a giveaway link down below. We're giving away four amazing prizes, including a full Ryzen 7 1700X gaming PC built in this case, a second full gaming PC, a Ryzen 5 2400G APU-based system, and two more awesome prizes. Go check that out down below. Now, this case has been covered by most tech review channels at this point. Some of them have given it a better rating. Some of them have, have given it a worse rating. I am going to talk about the pros and cons in this. Even though this case was sent to me by Cooler Master and they're sponsoring the giveaway, I'm still going to be honest with you about what I think is good and maybe not so good about it. Let's start with the stuff I don't like first, which they probably would rather I not do, but I'm just going to get it out of the way up front. This panel comes off ridiculously easy you cannot pick up the case using the front and back because this will just come straight off. Now, the plus side is it's very easy to remove and it's very easy to get access to the fans, to clean them. Perhaps you mount a radiator in the front. It will support a 360 millimeter radiator in the front as well as on the top, two of them. That's pretty cool. The other issue is this is very beautiful when the two 200 millimeter RGB fans in the front are turned on. Notice, however, this is plastic. Where's the airflow? It is airflow limited in the front on the plastic version. If you're going for a premium high-end super overclock system, this might be an airflow issue. Now there are vents on the side, but they are partially blocked by the size of the fans unless you remove the fans and perhaps put a radiator and fans behind it. But if you're going for a supreme top end system, yeah, you need airflow, but they do have the new mesh version of the case where this is all mesh providing excellent airflow. There will be a link down in the description below. If you already own one of these cases and you wish you had the mesh version, for $20, you can buy that, or at the time of filming, pre-order it from Newegg for $20, and it's a gunmetal. It's not the white, it's the same color as this, and you can replace the front panel with mesh if you want the airflow. Reattaching the side panel, you can see the vent along here. Now, here, in the middle and at the bottom, there is room for full airflow, but right here and here is where the two 200 millimeter fans are and it does constrict it a bit. These vents are on both sides and there's also vents here on the top and bottom and they're not very large, but for the Ryzen 7 1700X that's going in here, that doesn't bother me. That CPU does not actually run that hot. We're putting a very nice tower six heat pipe cooler in here. The airflow for the Ryzen 7 does not bother me. If you were going to put an i9-7900X in here, would this case be appropriate without the mesh? No, I'd want a mesh front if you're putting in that powerful of a system. If you're doing SLI or Crossfire graphics cards, again, I'd want the mesh. We're putting in a GTX 1060 in here. It's fine. The next thing I want to talk about is the glass front panel, partly to get it off so you're not looking at the reflection of my daughter's artwork. There is a single flathead screw right here that you only have to turn 90 degrees. We simply put our screw in. We turn this 90 degrees, and then the panel simply comes forward. It rests here, it does not fall off, and this is a really, really nice design. It comes up, and then it comes back down, and there is a lip on the bottom to hold it. Less expensive cases usually have four thumb screws, and then the panel just falls off and you have to catch it. This is a much better design. In addition, there are handles here where you can simply reach in and pull the panel off and take it straight off. I have now built with and worked in multiple tempered glass cases, not just from Cooler Master, but from uh, Corsair as well. And I have to say, this is the way you should do it. Even the very nice Crystal 570X, which is an expensive $180 case from Corsair, very beautiful, but it still has thumb screws on the side panels. You undo the four thumb screws and the panel just falls off. You have to catch it. And there's no handle on the glass at all. The fact that this has a handle, the fact that it has a ridge for support, and the fact that it's a single uh, one quarter twist screw in order to take it off is a much better design. If you ever go into and out of your case, make changes, tweaks, upgrades, this is definitely a better design than the four thumb screw system on most other cases. 
I have turned the case on its side and removed the front panel to just show you how much access you have to the front panel, to the front fans, and to the mounts. Now, two 200 millimeter RGB fans come pre-mounted, but these are easily removable, and behind it are mounts for up to a 360 millimeter liquid cooler, or simply three 120 millimeter fans if you want them. Turning the case 90 degrees, you can now see the top of the case. Now there is clear plexiglass here, but there are vent holes on both sides in order to allow airflow. And they're fairly large. They're not quite an inch, but they're on both sides. There is room for up to a 360 millimeter radiator here, or three 120 millimeter fans, or three 140 millimeter fans. There's a lot of fan mount options, and it's completely open up here. It is also extremely easy to remove this. You simply pull on the back right here, and it comes straight off. You are now looking through the top of the case, and you notice that there is nothing impeding anything here. You can mount in multiple places. There are rails along here to let you choose your mounting location. Perhaps you don't want three fans up here. Perhaps you want two 140s, and you'd like to position them in the middle rather than being in fixed locations. This mounting flexibility is very nice. You use the inside rails for 120s and the outside rails for 140s. You can also mount your fans outside the case. This entire top tray is removable. There are two screws here and two screws on the other side, and this entire top piece comes off the case. This is an extremely modular case designed to be very easy to build in. This is also offset vertically above where the motherboard mounts, so installing a radiator or fans up here will not block where the 8-pin CPU power connector has to go in the top of the motherboard because it's lifted above where the motherboard would be. Now I wanna talk about this front panel. I really like this front panel. You have a nice, big, easy to use power button right in the middle, you can't possibly miss it. The reset switch is smaller and recessed. You will not hit that accidentally, but it's not too hard to hit. You do have a hard drive activity light. Most importantly, headphone microphone jacks and two USB 3.0 ports and two USB 2.0 ports. I love cases that have four USB ports on the front. I personally use a lot of them, so it's just nice to have them to be able to plug in your things. Looking at the back of the case, there are a number of excellent features back here. Now, the most obvious might be these vertically oriented slots right here. This case supports vertical mounting of your graphics card on an extender with a ribbon cable to your motherboard so that you can have the fans and the beautiful RGB of your nice high-end graphics card sticking out rather than pointed down, which really doesn't make any sense if it's a pretty graphics card. It does not come with the mount in the case. It's an accessory you have to buy. I will link to it down in the description below. It's not inexpensive. And frankly, I don't know that a lot of people will go for it because when you see the price, you'll go $50 for a mount and a ribbon cable. Yeah, Cooler Master, that seems like a lot, but okay, fair enough. But if you do want a pretty graphics card mount, there's that. Or you can, of course, mount it in the normal slots like you would any other case and motherboard. Up here, we have a 140 millimeter fan pre-installed. That is not an RGB fan. You could replace it if you want, but it is a 140. It's also adjustable. The slides here, just like the ones on the top, you can loosen the screws and move the fan up or down as you wish. But most importantly, it is recessed towards you, or more importantly, the I.O. shield is recessed back. If you have a nice premium motherboard, which you should for a beautiful case like this, then you may have a shroud or a heat sink or plastic or something around your I.O. shield, which sticks up. In many cases, I have found that the rear mount fan interferes with that. Not in this case, because the actual mounting point here for the I.O. shield is recessed in towards the case with the fan pushed out, so they're not blocking. That is very, very good design. I mentioned the same thing up top. This entire piece, which mounts the fans and radiators for whatever you put up here, is lifted above the motherboard tray, so it's not going to conflict with cabling on the top of the motherboard. Now, you can see the power supply mounts down here. I'll show you more on that when I turn it around and take the shrouds off on the front, but it's nice and simple and out of the way at the bottom. I have now removed the back panel. Notice you can't see through it. You will in a second. There's a piece of plastic there, but why don't more case companies do this? When you take the panel off, the screws stay on the back. I am forever misplacing and losing screws when I take apart multiple machines. I love the fact that these come on here. Minor point, but it's just a nice attention to detail. Okay, I found the first thing I truly don't like. Taking the shrouds off of the bottom where the power supply and the drive cages are is not very well designed. You have to take off two screws here in the front, two screws in the back, 
two screws back here and two screws to remove the uh, cable routing shroud from here. That is eight screws total that have to be removed in order to take these off. And the shroud is in two pieces. Now, the nice part about the shroud being in two pieces is the fact that you can put half of it back on if you want. If you wanna leave the drive cages exposed, maybe you change out your hard drives a lot, or maybe you wanna leave room for an upgrade without doing all this, you can do that. You can just put this part on, which covers the power supply, and leave this part off, which covers the two drive cages, which I'll show you in a second. That's a bit involved to get access to it. So once you put the whole thing together and once you get your power supply in there, yeah, you're not ever gonna wanna change that. But in fairness, how often do you change your power supply? I am struck by the belief that this could have been designed differently with maybe slide out mounts so there was no screws to remove back here, but Engineering costs money, prototypes cost money, and uh, you know, if it's perfect, I guess it would cost 250 instead of $150, but that's a lot of screws just to remove some shrouds. These two panels were on the back that I had to remove earlier. This covers the motherboard tray, which you can now see open here. It's simply plastic and simply pops off. This is metal, and this is the cable management shroud that basically covers a third of the back of the case here and lets you cleanly run all of the cables back here. It actually has really good cable management back here with room to actually put all the thick cables you could possibly run. I'll turn it around in a second, but cable management in here is very sharp. This here is half of the shroud, which goes right here over where the power supply is. The other half, which you can't see at the moment, goes over the drive cages right there. You can choose to cover both of them or only half of them at your option once you get this whole thing assembled. Now what's nice is right here on top are two two and a half inch SSD mounting trays. They simply have thumb screws, they come off. The SSDs mount under them, not on top, because you want clearance for your cards and other items. So these actually come off, they mount underneath, and the cables go in the back. There is room here and a cutout in order to actually run all the cables underneath and across and up if you want so that you don't have ugly cables running here where it's nice and visible. This really is built, as I said, with great cable management. If you want a good, clean RGB look, it's definitely worth considering. Now the two trays down here are three and a half inch drive trays. They are toolish. You simply clip this and it simply slides right out. No big deal. There are notches and nubs on either side. So you just take a three and a half inch hard drive, drop it in, put the plastic out a bit. No tools required, very, very easy. There are also four mounting screws hole here. If you wanna put an SSD here, now it wouldn't be toolless, you need the, the drive screws, but you can also put an SSD or any two and a half inch drive as well. As I said before, that can be left exposed for easy access or covered with the other half of the shroud if you simply want no uh, obstructions other than the beautiful motherboard and RGB lights. Turning the case around, you can see all of the cable management. Now, all this back here will be open with the shrouds installed so you can run your cables. There is a large gap here. This is actually indented a bit to give you room to run your cable. They're tied here. You untie them and basically manage them there. But there is maybe a good half inch depth difference between where the back of the case would be and then this piece of metal over here so that you're not squishing all of the cables together. This really is meant to put every single cable back there. Your 24 pin ATX cable, your eight pin CPU connector, cables to the top or the front, all of your drive cables for anything, your SSDs down here in the bottom and whatnot. So this depth, the well that exists right here is absolutely enough for all of your cables. And it's one of the deeper cable management wells I've frankly seen in any case that I've reviewed. I've now turned the case around and I'm gonna zoom in here just a bit because I want you to see how easy the access is in the front. Now, many people who buy this case are just gonna leave the 200 millimeter fans in the front and you can do that. You might also possibly consider putting a radiator or a different fan mount or something else up front. And I want you to see how clean the mounting look is. You can see the fans very, very clearly because there aren't a bunch of crossbars or obstructions or fixed mounting points that will limit what you can do with the front of this. For expansion, upgradability, for customization of this case, the fact that it could be so completely disassembled, the good cable management, the good lighting, the two 360 millimeter matter, uh, radiator mounting locations, it's really, really nice. The deficiencies of this case, I would have to say, it's a minor one. The, the, the two shrouds having eight screws to take off is annoying, but honestly, now that I think about it more from having done that, you're gonna do that, what, once, probably? That might be minor. Now, some people aren't happy about how easy the front of the case and the top of the case are to take off. Fair enough. If that bothers you, well, there's the mesh version, which those are mounted a bit differently. 
But consider, this is a fairly big case. Once you build it, are you going to move it? I tend to build cases in mid-tower and full-tower cases. The computer under my desk is in a big full-tower case. Once I built my Skylake X system, which is under my desk, it got put there and has not moved since. So the fact that these are easy to remove really means nothing because it's gonna sit there for a long, the next time I move it will be to upgrade or replace it. If you're looking for a portable system that you can take to events or LAN parties, well, this is too big anyway. You need a, a smaller system for that, quite frankly. It's a personal choice. If you want more airflow, get the mesh version or get the upgraded front panel. It's really pretty and it's nice and open and the open space inside to install large graphics cards, dual graphics cards, the vertical mount, which cost a little bit much, $50 for that. But if you want it, don't care. Maybe you have a, a very beautiful RGB 1080 Ti. In that case, it's not that expensive. You could certainly do that there. Overall, considering the price, this is currently uh, on sale on Amazon and Newegg for less than MSRP. Links to that down in the description below. I will link to the mesh version. I will link to the upgrade front panel. Giveaway, as I mentioned before, is linked down there. Now, if you're watching this video not in March, the giveaway doesn't count. That's March 2018 only. It's a nice case. It has some compromises and it's not perfect, but I'm actually looking forward to building in this. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with that big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section. And as always, links in the video description, the giveaway in March, and to all the stuff at Amazon and Newegg. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video.